Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I'm Carl Grossman. The subject, electromagnetic radiation. And with us is Dr. Lewis Lesson. He is an expert in electromagnetic radiation, EMF, and all those things that you perhaps have been hearing about, reading about, seeing a little bit about, a serious concern. He's been the editor and publisher of a journal called Microwave News for lo these 17 years. In fact, a pioneer in looking into, well, the problems of this force, this radiation force that's let loose from power lines, from cellular phones these days, from electric blankets and so forth. But let's just first talk about cellular phones. Uh, I mean, they're, they're omnipresent these days in the United States, indeed, all over the world. A few years ago, there was some, or just kind of a flurry of uh, reports about, uh, well, cancer as a result of the use of cellular phones, health impacts. Basically, about four years ago, a, a gentleman called David Renard claimed on the Larry King show that his wife had died from using a cellular phone. Basically, she had developed a brain tumor and had subsequently died from that. And uh, he, he, he made public uh, announcements and, and caused quite a stir. I mean, in fact, the stock markets crashed. All the cellular phone stocks crashed. It was front page news all around the world. Unfortunately, there's very little data at this point to substantiate that claim. Not that it's, you know, not that it's impossible. There is a lot of data out there that's suggestive, but far from uh, evidence that, that you could take to a court and, and make a claim. He did file a, a lawsuit, uh, and uh, basically he lost. But as a result of that um, publicity, the cellular phone industry said, okay, we will spend five years, $25 million to try and find out whether there's a risk. In fact, they put it quite differently, to show there is no risk, they said, which is not quite the right way to go about such a research program. But here we are, four years later, not a single biological study has yet been funded by the industry program. Basically, the government doesn't want to get involved, EPA, FDA, uh, all the kind of alphabet suit of federal agencies out there just don't want to do the research. We've delegated to the Cellular Telephone Industry Association, and they're basically not doing very much. In contrast, I should say that Motorola, um, I think, is basically bought an insurance policy. They've been watching the CTIA effort and see that nothing is happening. They have gone off in independently, done their, you know, started their own research program. But basically, here we are, four years later, we know very little about this problem, up to about a week ago. And a week ago, there came startling news out of Australia. Basically, the Australian telecom, now called Telstra, a very large national phone company, funded a major research project basically exposing mice to exactly the type of radiation coming from a cellular phone. Now, I should say it's a digital cellular phone, which is uh, a bit different from what's mostly in use, but basically we're going digital in this country too. What they found was startling. What they found was that the mice developed cancer at twice the rate that the so-called controls, those unexposed mice. Um, and this was supposed to be impossible. There was no way this was supposed to happen. And um, it is front page news basically all around the world, in, in, in Israel, in Scandinavia, in Germany, in Australia. Actually, very little publicity here. I mean, the, I should say that the San Francisco Chronicle broke the story here in this country, put it in the front page just a week ago. Uh, but there's been very little pickup. Uh, Sun Sentinel did a piece, but very little else. Uh, and it, it, you know, this is crucial because, as I said, this kind of an effect was supposed to not be able to happen. We now have upwards of 100 million people using this technology worldwide. And estimates are within, you know, in the next decade, in, in the next century, we're going to have basically half a billion people using this technology. And, you know, it doesn't take a, a, an Einstein to work out that you're putting an antenna millimeters away from your brain, from your eyes. Um, there are potential risks here that need to be addressed, and they're just not being addressed. Obviously, the concern here is that if we have an industry that makes its money off, off this, off this process, and it is able to warp, to pervert the regulatory apparatus, I mean, we got a problem and it's nothing new. It happened with asbestos and it happened with lead. I mean, it's happened with so many poisons. Do you feel comfortable 
about how, oh, the supervision, the regulation of, of, of electromagnetic radiation of EMF stands today? There is no supervision. It's a big joke, basically. Nothing is going on. I mean, the, the, you've got to understand what, what, what's going on here. You, you're talking about, you know, up, up to half a trillion dollars, probably more, of GNP. You're talking all the electric utility companies. You're talking about all the computer companies. Because computers also emit electromagnetic radiation. One of the big issues was whether, whether pregnant women um, had a you know, risk to their, to their babies uh, from sitting in front of a computer all day. And I'm glad to say, because I, and I think Microwave News would take some credit for this, now all computer terminals basically from major manufacturers are shielded. So computers, electric utilities, what we blithely call the military industrial complex, consumer electronics, all, all of this um, technology is dependent on the free use and, and uh, belief that there is no effect of weak fields or weak radiation. I mean, this is the old joke is if you or I go bankrupt, who cares? If Citibank goes bankrupt, the government you know, uh, comes in and saves the day. Well, it's a bit like that in electromagnetic fields. We're all exposed. It's everywhere. So nobody wants to allow for the possibility that maybe there is something. There's just too much at stake. There's too many dollars at risk if you were to allow that this biological effect is possible. I mean, the computer industry is to be congratulated for shielding um, the terminals, the VDTs, if you will. But it turned out, the Swedes told us a decade ago, that it costs basically 75 cents a set to do it. I mean, if you do it at the factory, it costs practically nothing. But what happened, essentially, is that we solved the problem without ever admitting or deciding whether there was you know, a biological risk at all. So here we are, all over again, 10 years later, worrying about cellular phones. This is, it's, it's a different type of radiation, it's a different, you use it differently, but it's the same issue. You're holding an electromagnetic, uh, uh, sorry, a device which emits electromagnetic radiation right next to your body. As long as it's, you know, a two-piece phone wouldn't be a problem because, the, you know, by the time it got to you, it, it's not a problem. The radiation would be probably too weak. But any time, you, you know, whether you put an electric blanket on your body, whether you put a laptop on your, on your knees, or you use a cellular phone, you're putting a device that emits electromagnetic radiation um, right near you. And that's the issue that needs to be resolved. Whether it's one type of technology or another, it's the same generic problem as far as I'm concerned. What should people do? Write a letter. Tell your elected official, this is what you want to know. Because, uh, I might say, you know, one of the, one of the issues um, that is most in the public mind at the moment is cellular and PCS towers. Basically, there's 100,000 to 200,000 of these towers being built all across the country. And because of basically industry lobbying, the public is not allowed to raise concerns about the exposure from radio waves from those towers. It is, it is in the law that you, once the FCC has set standards, which it now has, you cannot raise this issue again. I mean, I find it deeply ironic in this, in this Republican environment of, you know, where we want to turn back authority to the states, get power back to the people. Oh, no, not that one. You know, not the ones where, you know, people have legitimate concerns. I mean, I have to say that, you know, my concern is much more with the phone you hold up to your head than the tower in the neighborhood because they're pretty weak. But certainly I would not want them on schools. I don't want them on playgrounds. I don't want them on kindergartens. Unfortunately, the phone companies are willing to pay a lot of money for rent. And, you know, listen, we don't know very much about this problem. And in our ignorance, keep them away from children. I mean, this is the basic lesson. But under the law, you can't raise those objections. Also to read Microwave News. How can people subscribe to Microwave News? Write to us. Microwave News, Post Office Box, 1799-1799, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10163, or email us at mwn at pobox.com, or look us up on the World Wide Web at www.microwavenews.com. What could be simpler? This has been Enviro Close-Up. I'm Carl Grossman. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.